All right, YouTube family, James Green, short series shenanigans, episode three of the hydraulic pump rebuild for the Boyer Schultz Challenger 2A, or it's actually Challenger Deluxe, I keep forgetting that. It's the Challenger Deluxe 2A 6x18 surface grinder. So, between the last video and this one's been about 30, 15 minutes, okay? Uh, <clears throat> because I didn't want to just drag on and sometimes you just have to like shut the camera off and go okay what is the next feasible step okay it was simple like I said trying to do this to, and I haven't ever been into this exact style of pump, pump before excuse me um, I did get it cleaned up uh, it doesn't show a name brand but it does give the pump number, and I'll read it to you. Um, 1LE7420 Alpha. And it says ILE20 on the side here. Now, for those of you that are in the hydraulics business, you probably know, oh yeah, that's a so-and-so something size 20 pump, and that may be. And here's, you know, because they always ask, and I know from working on Cessna pumps um, that depending on what it is, here's the, you know, you would order a kit for this style pump. So it's a gear rotary style pump. Okay, so this is the other part I was trying to get out. And so those of you that are curious, so that sits on one axis. This is spun by the other and it squeezes the oil in okay there's lots of demonstrations on how this uh there's lots of stuff out there on the internet that shows you how these pump so basically it squeezes the oil in between these and carries it around and generates the whole i'm not going to go into that so but, but I, that's good <laughs> nice good ring that's good though. I do know one thing I remember in the past is when you have this part out, if you hear a good solid, and I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but if you listen, and you can hear it keep ringing. I do remember from way back in the day, the old, uh, <coughs> the old uh, millwright that used to work for my father that I've talked and referred to many times about machining. He always told me whenever we went into pumps, if you pull this part out and you give it a good visual inspection, and we've been doing that, another reason to have an Optivizer, I have a lot of people ask. This one's actually made by Bosch. You can get them online. Uh, I know All Industrial Tool Supply has them. I'd have to go in and look and see what the part number is, but All Industrial Tool Supply does have these, and they come with three separate style of inserts. Uh, the one in I have in here now I believe is the 10 power, but you get in here and you make sure that there's no cracks Because this is one solid piece, okay? It is one solid piece But one thing he always told me was you give it a good look over and then you tap it And if it sounds like a tuning fork because sometimes you have big ones uh, and you hear that's good because it means everything's solid. He said it, you could have a crack somewhere and this is one of those areas in hydraulics that I've always paid attention to and it's true in anything that has to do with hydraulics like automatic transmissions and and the such is if I tapped this and it went clamp and made like it, it didn't ring and I'm going that lets you know there's a crack in there somewhere and then at that point you need to you know have that and look okay where is it cracked because this is actually made from one solid piece there's the machining center where it was held okay and then you can see in there get in there close enough there's a snap ring groove here that was unbeknownst to me so the way this went together was this is the bolted side. Okay, I've rinsed it out so you guys can see. Okay, you can see where it picks the oil up and where it ejects it. 
So I will slide this in here and it is a very, and that's good, it's a very tight fit. And that's what you want, a very tight fit. And let me get out the brass hammer here. Anyway, I don't want to drive it all back together dry. So what I essentially did was, is I drove this out. And that's good that it's ringing. This is all dry. So everything is a snug fit as far as that. Um, what was on the other side was this. And there's a little piece of phenolic. Now again, as I've said before, I've never had this style apart, so this is new to me. So there was, unbeknownst to me, on the back side in there, I don't want to drop this or lose it, you get all the junk off of it. That's the worst thing you can do is lose a part. And I know I don't have any snap rings this small around here. So, unbeknownst to me, when I drove it out, I heard snap, I heard a ch or a pop. So this was actually on there holding in this setup, which the way this goes through everything in there, it actually has a small phenolic. I've checked it and cleaned it up. Um, and this almost looks like a valve guide seal, okay? I mean, I, at first glance, that's what I thought. But there's a little phenolic washer here, and there was a lot of little garbage junk. Now, I've checked the diameter of this versus this, because this presses up against this area here. You can see where it rubs, okay? The rub pattern, all right? So that actually sets with that surface there up against and held in by this is what seals okay so you have this seal here and this phenolic rides against this what keeps the oil from coming out of the shaft is this seal here all right now you can slide that comes off and you have a spring that pops off and I, I cleaned it up and so there's this part here and there is a part number on it so <laughs> guess what Chad <laughs> he's watching this video I know he is my buddy that works at the auto parts store that he loves these challenges because he was in the Air Force and he did hydraulics so anything hydraulic I throw at him or a seal or an oddball part number I'm like here because he's one of the few people that knows how to use an actual parts book you know the, back in the good old day well, let me cross that number and see so this is going to be a challenge for him I don't know how long it's going to take him to figure out but that's where our stopping point for the rebuild is going to be um, I'm going to have him look up and you guys out there, you might say, oh, that's a so-and-so seal. Here's the cross number and whatever. Um, I will attempt to read the number because you, the viewer out there, you guys that do this for a living, you might know exactly what this is. This, again, having optivizers is handy as all get out. Because these are some really small numbers. I don't know what name brand seal it is. On one side down here, it looks like it says 79. Or no, no, wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, so at the bottom down here on one end, it says 79. And then the other number 
is I'm tr having trouble trying to get it to read. There's looks like there's two letters, a dash, and then a series of numbers. So I'm going to try an old trick of getting a colored pencil so I keep colored pencils in there. Red crayon. I wondered where that went to. I've been looking for it. <laughs> there you go. My uh, end for my tape. Everyone's like, what is that? I'll show you real quick. So I care, I'm a big fan of these little tapes that go in your pocket. These are the old Starrett number 500s. This one happens to be 36 inches. So what you do is if you, you know, it takes more, you know, so let's say you have one that's like 90 inches or you don't want to what you do is we, you go with this number 514 here, you actually tape this and you slide the uh, end in it here like such. And it holds. Okay, it clamps, cr clamps, crimps onto it, clamps onto it, and then you hold it and you set it on your piece of stock and then you can pull it out and measure. Okay, so that's your your dead man, whatever you'd want to call it. Your third hand. So, I love these little, because they're handy. These are super handy to have. Okay, colored pencil. Let's try the colored pencil trick. Alright, I know I've got one in that toolbox, let me go grab it. So this is what I'm talking about, the big peel away red crayon pencils here. Let's peel some of that back. Get some fresh. I also keep a uh, box cutter handy. We'll get some really fresh wax out there on it. Okay. I'm going to try to raise the letters, and this is a trick he showed me years ago. You can take some of this, or you can take some white chalk maybe. I don't know, we'll try it and see. It's if you can get contrast to it. All right, I'm gonna add a little extra light. There we go. Uh, having several sets of lenses, this makes it fun to try to read. Okay, oh yeah. Having that die on there helped a lot. So the first letters I see are India Mike dash zero two, correction, zero five two four two. So that's India Mike dash zero five two four two and there we go that helped a lot getting some contrast on there and using these and some extra white light from the LED stuff really helped so that is what actually keeps the oil from running out of that shaft where it shows and so this actually sets in everything this way. And it feels tight like that right there, but when this thing gets hot, you know. Now I did notice, and it does feel tight. You go to put it on there, and it's, it's I mean it's snug. It's, that seals. But when it gets hot, now I do know that the phenolic does have considerable amount of wear when we put it on the shaft and you can I've got my garage door open yes this is like what is this mid-July now we're like what the 14th 15th and we still have people let's see what time of the night it is it's 
it is 11:45 at night so yeah this is the saturday night before sunday shenanigans so 11:45 at night we still have way off in the distance out in the county because it's out that way we have people lighting fireworks on oh excuse me july the 16th so not a big deal so we do notice that this phenolic does have where okay all areas but that doesn't seal and as far as where this rides up against everything it's a cushion hmm I mean that fit on there really tight and I don't see any extraordinary wear patterns okay what I did notice though was this this is the the nut now what fit up inside there is you have the phenolic goes through or the the shaft goes through there and then you have this o-ring that fits on the outside and that fits up inside there okay and so we'd have a little bit of oil getting past it's probably getting past this o-ring i'm thinking because you can tell it has turned i'll try to get a good background what would be a good background okay here's a piece of white paper all right and this is probably where it's coming from in all reality that i'm how i troubleshoot it you can see how it has squared up okay as was the one that came off of here you know that we're going to replace it's still spongy and you can see it's lost a bit of its shape trying to show you guys here but it will get replaced and you can tell whenever it was put in it looks like part of it was cut and you can see okay um, this let's pull this out see oh yeah that's real hard this is where you have to be careful don't stab yourself let me get my other one here let me get the dental hook oh yeah this thing's nice and hard I'm pressing on it and it's the indention staying there so Yeah, that's where we're leaking from, is this thing here. Getting that out is going to be fun, 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 fun. Yeah, that's where our leak is. That thing is hard as all get out. Let's try. Sometimes you can grab... Oh, no. This is where you have a plethora of like dental picks and different things for removing stuff. Is that, oh yeah, that thing is so stinking hard, it's not even funny. Actually, so that I don't stab myself in the hand, that's what these are for. This is stare at number 86. And we don't want to mess anything up. We're just going to hold it there so that you don't accidentally slip and run it into your hand. If I can just get under it and get one edge started. I don't want to cut the O-ring because I want to be able to uh, get a proper measurement. Man, this thing's hard as a rock. That's where it was leaking, yeah. Oh yeah, that's where it's leaking. That's where, okay, we thought maybe it might have been this seal. That one's fitting tight. This is where it was leaking from. So let's try the good old fashioned hiding down here. I've got a special screwdriver that has been with me for many a moon. Me and this screwdriver here, man, if that thing could talk, I've had that thing since I was like 10 or 12 years old. 
me and that screwdriver have traveled all over the world. That is like <laughs> you know how some people have a security blanket? I have a security screwdriver. Yeah, me and this screwdriver, we go way back. It's Ready Tool USA. So, these were some of the best screwdrivers that they ever made. These little pocket ones, pull them out. I even used to have in my knife scabbard on the side, I would slide this right down next to it. fun to get out so I think we have figured out where it's leaking from and I've got a wide selection of both Imperial and metric yeah, I want to set that up my other vice I don't slip and go through everything so also we have that little oil light bushing in there so I cleaned and cleaned and cleaned. Let's see how it fits. It's pretty tight. Is if there's any, I mean, there's maybe a half tent. If you hold it here, and if you go out here, let's see. Because this thing sits right about here, okay? Yeah. I mean, there's wiggle in it. What I may do, I don't know. You gotta have clearance in there for stuff, but I don't know. I don't see any abnormal wear. It's one of those sayings, it's like, okay, do I press it out and put another one and bore it out to fit? And I may do that. I honestly may do that. Just because that little bit of, you know, I don't know. No, that's, that's, you don't want it too tight. And you got to have just enough. My leak, I'm convinced at this point that my leak was this right here. Okay. that external washer that fit into here okay and you're gonna get a little bit of seepage which you do need a little bit of seepage to keep this oiled which is fine and that's what it looked like from what we saw you know there was a little bit there so I will go through and I will see if I can find one of these seals because it's like, okay, well, if I can get it, even if I have to wait a week or two, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Um, this is one of those things that's like, while you have it apart, go through it. You know, I'm going to take that cover off that end of that mode. And I'll do that off camera. That's nothing big fancy. Uh, if I notice anything, I'll be sure and tell you guys about it. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be before I reassemble this. And we will call that video for and go on from there. So... <clears throat> hopefully this has been helpful to you guys and gals um, again I haven't been into this type of pump here on one of these so if you the viewer have and you have any suggestions by all means post them in the comments I love to hear them I love constructive comments or if you guys want to send me a message you don't want people to see it in the comments send me a private message through YouTube um, I'd be more than happy to I'm on Facebook uh, Instagram, Twitter, contact me, send me an email, my public email address, eagledustoff37 at gmail.com. So, <clears throat> this is pretty much the stopping point until I get some replacement parts. Um, and so, I don't know when that's going to be, but there you go. Hopefully, this has been very useful to you. Um, if you ever have to take one of these apart or you know, it kind of shows you how I go through and problem solve. That's the biggest thing. You may not have ever had one of these apart, but any mechanic or anybody that wants to work on something on the weekend, if you have basic uh, 
I call it common sense, you know. Things go together a certain way. Um, just approach it from, okay, well, first off, it's like, okay, well, what I like to do is, hey, is there a video out there, you know. But I've had enough of these pumps apart. Um, I have a general idea of they all basically work the same way. You just look for wear parts. The biggest problem that I've ever seen with hydraulic pumps is you have a seal that goes bad or earlier on in my channel last year I did the hydraulic valve body rebuild it was the poppet for the control valves those are the biggest things that go bad um, in the control valves those poppets will just break um, so o-rings poppets and if you have a filter that goes bad then it just puts metal or if you have a pump that goes bad then it just sends metal through the whole system but I think we found our culprit, that O-ring right there, and I'll have to dig through and I'll figure out everything about it. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Spread the word about my channel. Again, I'd like to say thank you to All Industrial Tool Supply. Um, I know they've got these. I will, uh, <coughs> I will look through their book and I will post the link <coughs> in the bottom of this video for their optimizers. I know they have them. Uh, this one's made by Bosch, and they're very, very handy. Yes, they're like $50, but trust me, it's worth it. Nice adjustable back, comfortable headband. I've had several of the 991, you know, 999 ones that fall apart and whatever. Um, if you're going to be doing a lot of small, tedious work, or, you know, when you get older and you need to have something other than eyeglasses, it's just part of aging you got to have your optimizers and the number one use for these in the shop getting splinters out of your hands that alone is worth its weight in gold trust me so there you go thanks for watching click the like button on your device wherever you're watching spread the word about my channel and have fun get out in the shop and do something take care of yourself and take care of your family because remember at the end of the day, you and your family is all you got. Until next time, you guys be safe. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.